film you're about to watch is about vortex math. It's so easy, even I get it. Here's the challenge that we have. We don't yet have the technological breakthroughs that can completely replace fossil fuels. So for the next 10 years, next 20 years, we're still going to be using oil. We're still going to be using coal. We're still going to be using natural gas. We're still going to be using the traditional sources to fuel our cars, to heat our homes, to run our big power plants, etc. Unless somebody here invents something tomorrow, which would be very helpful, and if you have it, let me know. With all due respect, Mr. President, this is me letting you know. I'm here representing the Vortex-based mathematics project, which was founded by my teacher, Marco Rodin. Almost 40 years ago, Marco discovered an unknown mathematical language inherent to nature, and I found the key of how to model it in three-dimensional space. The saying is that mathematics is the language of God, but until now, no one's been speaking God's language. I went and read the Bible. I went and read the Quran, I went and read the Torah, and I decided to start to read any of the world's major religions. I went and studied on Buddhism, I studied being on a sage, which was really a pleasure. So this inspired a journey for him, and he began to search through all the different ancient knowledges of the world, uh, all, all the different religions of the world, and he found this common thread throughout, that they all seem to be onto this, right? And there seemed to be this, this common thread that throughout all the religions, the, the most sacred and holy and cherished thing was the name of God and the intonation of the name of God. Yeah. Well, I'm here speaking because I'm at the forefront right now of the most advanced mathematics ever known to mankind because my teacher, Marco Rodin, discovered an unknown mathematical language inherent to nature, and I found the key of how to model it in three-dimensional space. The saying is that mathematics is the language of God, but until now, no one's been speaking God's language. What we have is the grand unified field theory. With it, you can create inexhaustible free energy, end all diseases, produce unlimited food, travel anywhere in the universe, build the ultimate supercomputer, artificial intelligence, and obsolete all existing technology. How is it possible to make such outrageous claims? Because we have the secret that connects all of the world's technologies together, numbers. We discovered that numbers are real, a living language, a jigsaw puzzle that when pieced together no longer creates a rendition or approximation of reality. Numbers are reality, neither flat nor arbitrary nor imaginary nor irrational. They are actually points or locations that fold out into a 3D shape defining space and time literally. Mr. Roden discovered an equation that was so eloquent in its simplicity that it involved no more than nine numbers around a circle. And with it, you can do all the functions of all the branches of math instantly. It displays a perfect spin symmetry of numbers forming mirror images just like our two hands, a feat that's baffled countless scientists and mathematicians. When you look at this symbol, you immediately see it's composed of two aspects. One is this lazy eight, or the infinity symbol, and the other is the red pyramid at the top. The infinity symbol is the equation for the physical world we live in. It's a circuit or a pathway of motion. Six numbers that form a hexagon. Thus, such diverse phenomena as light polarizing, beehive, Saturn's north pole, and snowflakes are all versions of this hexagon. These shapes form pathways for any matter in motion, which is never straight, but always at an angle. Nothing in the physical world ever moves in a straight line, not a bullet shooting, not lightning coming down out of the sky. Everything is a coil, even a photon coming from a distant star proving relativity exists. Our body is called this mortal coil. Our DNA is a coil, and it's no coincidence that it matches our equation perfectly. It makes us into a vortex machine that sucks things in at the top 
and shoots them out at the bottom. As it does this, it regulates its own temperature, a really important concept for technologies that are always overheating. It's an imploding, exploding machine, a gyroscope, an antenna built to perfectly transmit and receive waveforms. In fact, Marco's antenna designs are protecting the four corners of the United States because they were found to be the most sensitive antennas ever created. Around the same time, he also presented at the largest genetic engineering conference in the world on DNA sequencing, thus proving the ability of this math to cross between the sciences. Jonas Salk, who was the inventor of the polio vaccine, stated that this work was so advanced it would never be understood in Marco's lifetime unless he cloned himself. And so maybe that's what I am. But what's the connection between all these sciences? And the answer is simple. It's doubling. When you follow what these numbers are doing, you get doubling. And why might that be significant? Where our cells double to create us. We have one cell, conceptions, two, four, eight, 16, 32. Musical scales are doubling. The binary code for computers doubling. Nuclear reactions, squares and square roots, all doubling. Doubling is motion at an angle, or what's called angular momentum. It's the whirlwind and treadmill of creation. It spins the atoms in our body, the Earth on its axis, the solar system, galaxy, the whole universe. And so what causes this doubling? What is it that's being transmitted and received? And that's where that red pyramid comes in. This pyramid is representative of what we call flux fields. We have electricity at the center of electricity is magnetism. At the center of magnetism is a flux. It's a higher dimensional energy known by many names such as dark energy, tachyons, monopoles, gravitons. We call it etheron energy. It's the energy that's keeping us conscious and alive. And it's not a static or stationary energy. It's a pulse. It's a surge. It's the beating heart of all existence. It's the ultimate fundamental particle in the universe, the God particle. And I know how to harness it. This energy is the source of all time, motion, and vibration. It's the only thing that comes from the whole, or the zero, the center of the cyclone. It emanates linearly in all directions, penetrating everything without any resistance. It cannot be shielded. As it penetrates, it leaves a grain. It shows you how things move, how they stick together or come apart. It animates everything. It's the source of the non-decaying spin of the electron. If you combine it with a coil, you get a perfect mathematical vortex, consisting of a positive electromagnetic energy radiating out and a negative backdraft counter space, which is the same as gravity. It allows for contraction. Etherons are literally the glue that holds the universe together. Einstein called it an inertia ether. Ultimately, when this is arrayed in true 3D shape, which is what I discovered, it forms a shape commonly known as a torus or a donut. This is nearly 20 years later. What I found was this. Essentially, this thing is a heat sink. It's a temperature regulator, just like your human body. It's a universal geometry designed for maximum efficiency and energy transformation and an ecological method by which the universe reprocesses matter, using it as a coolant source to bathe itself at the core of a black hole and then dissipate, dissipate heat away out of a white hole. It's based on compression, decompression, just like we use to control temperatures and technologies like refrigerators. The Big Bang was just one of these reactions giving birth to this expanding universe, which is expanding because we're on the southern half. The northern half is contracting. Okay? Space expands, time contracts, black hole to white hole. The torus is what everything becomes at its maximum acceleration. This experiment you're going to watch while I finish my talk I want you to keep in mind when you're watching this magnet spinning around, there's no energy going into this coil. It's totally turned off. And I'll continue. Your blood cells are a torus. DNA is a torus. Magnetic fields, galaxies, all toruses. That's why a tornado is more powerful than an atom bomb. It's a one-way living systemic electrical machine, a self-sustaining jet. You might say a flying saucer. I found a way to calculate this torus in a perfect 3D, 4D, and higher mathematical hologram that can be scaled up and down to infinity, and which we now call the Abha Torus. Or sometimes we refer to it by Marco's name, which is the Flux Ruster Atom Pulsar Electrical Venturi Space-Time Implosion Field Generator Coil. <laughs> and with it, it's possible to create a localized space-time implosion, a controlled desktop black hole. That magnet's still spinning. There's no energy in the coil. This is the final technology, the Philosopher's Stone, a reactionless drive unaffected by any weight that it carries. It's a true model of an atom, and with it I have the key to the periodic table, which a professor from the University of North Carolina told me could be the greatest scientific discovery of all time. We can, for the first time, cross from one science to another, unbroken, whether it's subatomic physics, periodic table, computer science, DNA. Remember, I said cure all diseases, artificial intelligence, all the result of etheron flux fields, 
And so simply put, this torus does it all. It's a blueprint for a perfectly efficient magnetic field generating coil, a spaceship, a surgical tool, a supercomputer, and even a high fidelity speaker all in one. Very are such things guidance. possible? Frankly, yes, they are. And my team is ready to develop them at any time. What you see here was just from the most primitive approximation of my work. But the truth and reality of our project is it suffered from a tremendous lack of attention. We want to turn it into the hands of the people to produce and save uh, the whole world. So thank you very much. <laughs>
energy this is all free energy and let's give it the right frequency and I'm just turning that little knob there you go so you saw the flash that discharged my capacitors and now they're charging back up again and let's look for that frequency again there it goes discharge my capacitors let's do it again so I'm lowering the frequency and then raising it back up so give it a little charging time there there it goes that's a, a spike of free energy but essentially this is defining a pathway for matter in motion the path of least resistance and numerically that's defined by doubling okay so that's one aspect of what this equation is. It's defining a doubling sequence. Now, then we have this 396. What's the 396? Well, if you look into studying physics, you know, there's really only two things you can study, right? If you look up the definition of physics, it's defined as the study of matter in motion. Of course, then what is putting matter in motion? What, what is causing the matter to move? What is the source of time, motion, and vibration? And that's where you get to the number nine, okay? But before I go to the number nine, I want to talk about three and six. Well, what are three and six? Okay, three and six represent the absolute extremes. They end in the middle of nowhere, and as an engineer friend of ours says, nothing mechanical does that. Okay, everything mechanical connects to something else. Uh, nothing mechanical ends in the middle of nowhere. The three and the six do that. Interestingly, three doubled, if you double three, uh, following the same process, is six. 6 doubled is 12, 2 and 1 is 3, 12 doubled is 24, which equals 6, 24 doubled is 48, which equals 3, right? They oscillate back and forth. Now, the only thing that we know that oscillates is magnetism, and that is really essentially what this is defining. The other aspect of physics, other than matter and motion, are what we call fields, which are a lot more mysterious, you know? They have these properties like non-locality, perhaps. Um, they, they seem to in many ways defy a lot of the boundaries we've set around what matter can actually do. Fields seem to be, um, to have uh, different properties. Some of those testing observations? Testing ob observations. Controllable low voltage ozone production, multiple magnetic monopole detection, energy gains using a one-to-one -one ratio, one-to-one -one ratio coils, coil sensitivity to the Earth's magnetic field, bioelectric interactions with the coil, energy reduction when charging batteries or spinning magnets, synchronization of multiple rotors at different axes, plasma excitation through the center of a vortex coil, increased growth rates in plants around coils, self-cooling properties when running high voltage, very large magnetic fields for little input power, 576 LEDs illuminated using only one watt of power, and many more. Step 5. 
snip the wire from the spool and tie it around the bundle. Step six, get your wireless drill and connect your hook to it. Step seven, now it's time to twist. Now that we use the drill to twist the wire, it's time to spool it. Step nine. Find a comfortable spot because now it's time to wind the coil. We will begin by doing the counterclockwise wind first. Up and over. When it met the starting point, you're just gonna skip one above it. Step 10. When you meet the starting point, now you may begin the clockwise wind. Just note that after the very first loop, you will be going directly under the starting point. Step 11. Now that the winding is complete, it is time to take the torch and melt off the enamel at the end of the wire. We are melting off the enamel, so when it's time to solder, it's easier to make the connections. Step 12. Now it's time to sand the ends and remove the burnt enamel. connected to any of the wires. Right now we have 48 wires. So being that it made the connection this is the finish when this is the start. Take the finished wire and connect it to any other wire. And you're going to repeat this process 11 times. So now that I finished with channel A, this makes it one wire and I am going to proceed to doing the same thing I did with these 11 connections on channel B. That sound is channel B completed. Now for step 14, we're going to solder all the connections. For step 15, get electrical tape and put it around the ends of the wire that was soldered to avoid the connections touching. successfully finish wiring and connecting your POE vortex coil it is time for testing we're gonna take channel A and connect it to the amplifier and channel B
and connect it to the amplifier. Now for the last two wires that are remaining, they are going to be connected to the 192 LED panel. Turn it on and voila! Thank you very much for your time. This is Erica Nunez with OneStopEnergies.com. Please share and spread the word. Many blessings.
Just this humble little device implies more about the laws of physics than most, if not all, expensive technologies on the market today. And now i found the key of how to model it in three-dimensional space. The importance of this discovery cannot be underestimated. With it, I believe we can create inexhaustible clean energy, produce unlimited food, end all diseases, travel anywhere in the universe, build the ultimate supercomputer, and obsolete all existing technology. How is it possible that we make such outrageous claims? It's because we have the secret that connects all the world's technologies into one. Numbers. A living language. A jigsaw puzzle that when pieced together no longer forms an approximation or a rendition of reality. Numbers are reality. All right, so this is the new setup. We have the coil all covered up, looking beautiful in her base. So what we're doing here is we're running a 12 volt battery and we're charging that 12 volt battery with a solar panel. And while it's charging, it's discharging higher voltage to turn on these lights. But the interesting part is it charges faster than it can discharge. And this is without using an inverter. So basically what you see is what you get. You have a 12 volt panel that's charging the battery. The battery is going through this box which is creating a sound frequency and the coil is able to harness the ether or the subtle energy in order to convert it into usable electricity at higher voltage, higher amperage so that we're still able to charge the battery even though we're using electricity so by the time the sun runs out we'll be able to run these lights for the whole entire evening and when the sun comes back it'll charge up the battery once again so this is kinda like one of these little solar panel garden lights except this is on steroids so I just wanted to share that with you all and uh, blessings take care and thanks for watching humanity doesn't have to have a dark future and it's not going anywhere that we don't steer it we have a technology in our hands that can boom the market of alternative energy, solar cells, and electric vehicles and change our world forever. We have already achieved the impossible, but now we need your help to make the impossible an everyday experience.